Welcome to Forecast Lab. We are running late today. We're having air conditioner problems. Of course, that's very typical during a heat wave. 86 degrees in my office as I record this. And I've been spending some time out there working on it. So anyway, this will be a little bit short. But let's check out the satellite imagery. We've got smoke coming out of Canada, very prominent wildfire smoke pouring into the northern and central plains. And we've got an active frontal system in the Great Lakes region with the tail end extending down into Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. The surface analysis at 3 p.m. Eastern, which is about four hours old at this point, but still a lot of the details are valid. Surface low around Lake Michigan, cold front extending down into the Ozarks and entering the Red River Valley of Texas. And there's that smoke pouring into the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas. You can see all the symbols there for haze. The sensor really can't differentiate smoke and haze that well. But you can certainly see the extent all the way from Des Moines down to Kansas City, Woodward, almost Oklahoma City, and Dodge City. All that tropical air, which is contributing to a never-ending heat wave in Texas, there it is, dew points in the upper 60s. 101 at DFW, we saw 103 earlier, and some of that heat extending all the way into the northeast. And interestingly, as you go further into the northeastern U.S., it gets even warmer. 91 degrees at Albany, that was a record breaker. We saw 97 degrees at Atlantic City. 93 at JFK Airport, Islip was 92, 93 at Central Park, 92 at LaGuardia. And they do have those heat advisories across much of that region, pretty much in this zone right there. In the southeastern U.S., we have a slight risk across the Memphis area down into northern Mississippi and parts of Arkansas right in there. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery. And there's what it looked like earlier today. The storms got going around Memphis and around Little Rock to Hot Springs back towards southeastern Oklahoma, and they're propagating southeastward. The length of those anvils does indicate that we have some bulk shear. Look at that right there. Anvil almost 100 miles long. There's a look at the sounding in southwestern Arkansas. You can see the winds up at 200, 300 millibars at about 35 knots. And there's just enough of a direction differential to kind of stretch out that photograph a little bit more. See, there's the zero kilometer vector. The six is down here, and that gives it just a little bit extra shear. Not a whole lot, not like what we see in the springtime, but this late in the summer, that is significant. And some steep lapse rates all the way up to 500 millibars and plenty of moisture. Dew points in the 70s and 60s all the way up to 6,000 feet. And we do have excessive heat warnings for the DFW and Shreveport area. Heat advisories across much of eastern Texas and Louisiana and Arkansas. Let's take a look at the southwestern U.S. Hot, 99 degrees at Phoenix. They do have an excessive heat watch in effect for the lower southwestern deserts for this weekend. That includes Phoenix, Tucson, Yuma, Imperial, Blythe. That's valid this weekend. Temperatures 106 to 113 are possible. Temperatures in California right now are mild. Plenty of 80s inland. And we've got a very deep marine layer in the San Diego, Los Angeles area up to 4,000 feet. So some of those clouds have been moving through the passes this morning. Set up north. Cold front across the northwestern U.S., a very pleasant 67 at Seattle, 68 at Portland. And as we go north, we get some cold core type showers in Banff National Park and up the Canadian Rockies. Heading north into Alaska, kind of a broken record up there with cool temperatures, north to northwesterly flow, and another low around the Brooks Range. So continued cloudy. They do have full rivers and streams in the Seward Peninsula and adjoining areas. And with all that recent rainfall, a lot of small villages are built up along those rivers. So that's a bit of a hazard for them. There's the 14-day precipitation totals in Alaska. 
and they've got five inches right up there. That's going to be some distance northwest of Fairbanks. Fairbanks itself sitting on that yellow, which is about two inches. And it will be rainy in the south. The atmospheric river will be affecting southeastern Alaska on Friday, looking for almost two inches around Yakutat and Haines, and lower as you go south, down to about one inch around Juneau. In Canada, very slowly cooling down, but you do see that wildfire smoke there. This has been the smokiest year on record for Saskatchewan and Alberta. Smoke hour figures, which are the number of hours where smoke was reported, going back to May 1st. Many stations in Alberta and Saskatchewan reporting anywhere from 200 to 800 smoke hours during that period. And we've got some new developments out there in the Atlantic. Hurricane Lee, just in the past few hours, upgraded from tropical storm status, 65 knots. So that's a very low-end Category 1 storm. That's expected to gradually strengthen over the next three days into a high-end Category 4 storm. Let's take a look at that track. Pretty much as expected. That's pretty similar to what we showed on the Monday supporter video. So we pull up the AWIPS display. This is the same system used by the National Weather Service. And we see Lee coming together right there. This is a plot of streamlines, pressure, thickness in red. Thickness isn't really all that important on this chart. And vorticity, which is the shading. The vorticity shows us where the circulation is really wrapped up tightly. And you can follow Lee there. It's going to take a track very similar to Franklin, pretty much through the Bermuda Triangle and just west of Bermuda. Not seeing any indications that will affect Bermuda, which is located right there, a little speck. See that right there? Just grazing Bermuda, and that should remain out to sea. No indications that will affect Cape Cod just yet. Things could always change, so you want to keep close tabs on the forecast, but none of the previous runs have been taking that towards the east coast. Very good consistency so far. So let's take a look at that forecast. There's our frontal system in the Great Lakes. Tail in front all the way to Texas, and that's just going to sag southward. It'll trigger some storms around peak heating every day. And you can see that ridge building into the Midwest region. So cold air advection flowing into the Ohio River Valley. And return flow in Texas, bring in moisture and heat up through the plains. And we're going to have that tail in front kind of like that. So you want to watch maybe the Dallas Fort Worth area, Texarkana, Shreveport, Little Rock over the next couple days because there could be some precipitation. In fact, there's some right there that's nocturnally driven early Friday and looks like more precipitation for Friday and Saturday. And there's another reinforcing shot coming through the northern plains, and that gets to the end of the sequence. And you probably saw that other chart pop up and wonder what that was. That's the 2PVU chart that identifies weather at the tropopause. So this is up at about 40 or 50,000 feet. The colors, the swirls of yellow, orange, green, that corresponds to the height of the tropopause. So where we have orange and yellow, it's a lot higher. In fact, you see those little 100s right there. That's 100 millibars, indicating about 50,000 feet. So all of this is about 45 to 50,000 feet. Now, where we have the greens and blues, those are going to be a lot lower. So that's going to be probably about 30,000 feet. In fact, let's look at the scale at the very top. Green, that's going to be about 225 millibars. That's close to about 40,000 feet. And the blues, that's about 300 millibars, so that's about 30,000 feet, so that's getting even lower. That's about cruise altitude for most jets. Now, where you have very tight signatures like that, where it's blue, that's going to indicate frontal systems, mesoscale processes where there's very strong ageostrophic flow, and tropopause folds. So we're going to see a lot more of those as we get into winter, but right now the chart is dominated by this big subtropical ridge. And we can kind of follow that along to follow the heat wave going into this weekend. You can see that high settling across Baja California, California itself, and Arizona. 
Saturday. This is Saturday's chart. This is going to be about the peak of the heating. And then going into Sunday and Monday, we notice that subtropical high, actually closer to Friday and Saturday next week, starts moving east towards Texas. So some of that heat wave could be back once again for the central U.S. Okay, I got to get this wrapped up. Thank you for watching Forecast Lab. As a reminder, I, I still will be editing the closing credits and get that list of our great supporters up to date. So if you're not a supporter or your support has lapsed, you might want to get that taken care of so we can make sure that you're in the credits and it is much appreciated and helps keep this program going because it is a pretty big time investment. So anyway, I need to get back out there and work on that AC some more. Hope you have a great evening and we'll see you back here again for the Friday show. Take care. Bye-bye.